a micro sleep Malaysia remains firm in its stance of supporting Palestinians and Hamas Improved facilities must be translated into better education quality Good evening and salam Malaysia Madani. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos and you are watching Malaysia Tonight. Well, Parti Karilan Rakyat PKR has never been a member of international organization Liberal International. Now, during the minister's question time in the Dewan Rakyat today, well, Prime Minister and Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim, who is also PKR president, also hoped that the issue would not be politicized. Yang Muhammad boleh semak, kita tidak pernah menjadi anggota. Saya, saya harap jangan dipolitikkan. Kita jadi pada peringkat awal associate. Tetapi oleh kerana ada beberapa keputusan mereka termasuk mengiktiraf LGBT dan pendirian Israel, kita tidak menjadi ahli. Datuk Sri Anwar also explained why he once attended and delivered a speech at a liberal international conference in Cairo, Egypt. This is because Egyptian opposition leader Ayman Noor and Muslim Brotherhood representative Mahdi Akif attended it. Dato Sri Anwar said Mahdi Akif congratulated him on his firm stand on issues related to tyranny, rights to the people and Palestine. Regarding Liberal International's support for Israel, the Prime Minister said PKR had severed ties with the organization mm -hmm. and the matter had been reported to the Minister of Communications and Digital, who is also PKR's Head of Information, Fami Fazil. Well, meanwhile, Dajos Rianwar said the government remained firm in its stance of supporting the Palestinians and Hamas and does not consider Hamas as a terrorist group. Well, it said Malaysia also condemns Israel's campaign of genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. In addition, Dato Sri Anwar said the Malaysian government does not recognize any unilateral decision made by any country, including the United States, to impose sanctions against individuals, agencies or countries supporting Hamas. Kerajaan tidak mengiktiraf mana-mana keputusan, mana-mana negara, termasuk Amerika Syarikat, yang mengenakan sekatan atau sanction secara unilateral. Kita hanya mengiktiraf keputusan Majlis Keselamatan Bangsa-Bangsa Bersatu yang dibuat apa yang disebut sebagai multilateral. Jadi tentunya kita pertama tidak bersetuju dengan cara dan dibuat oleh Amerika Syarikat. Keduanya, dia tidak mempengaruhi dasar dan keputusan kita. Sebab itu, soal um, pertama, hubungan dengan Hamas, kita teruskan dulu dan sekarang. Dan kita tidak menganggap uh, menghukum Hamas sebagai badan pengganas. On another matter, Dato Sri Anwar said efforts by the government to improve learning facilities in the country need to be translated into improved quality of education for students. The Prime Minister also said he had instructed the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Higher Education to focus on improving the quality of national education as early as next year in line with the improvement of the facilities. Tumpuan kita ialah meningkat dan mengangkat mutu pendidikan. Itu cabaran. Eh, sekolah dah elok. Tanah dah siap. Kemudian asas cukup. Tunggu apa lagi? Tapi prestasi masih sama tahun lalu. Tak boleh kita terima. Ya. Minta kemudahan. Minta bantuan. Kita bantu. Tahun ini lebih baik. Tapi prestasi murid-murid tak berubah. Kita tak boleh terima. 
According to the Prime Minister, Malaysia cannot progress and develop if the quality of education does not improve. He also said that the Education Ministry did not need to worry about anything else apart from enhancing the mastery of subjects such as language, mathematics, science, computer technology, religion and others. Well, Health Minister Dr. Zaliha Mustafa said as at 30th September, a total of 2,714 patients have been given the pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP, which serves to reduce the risk of HIV infections under the Health Ministry's pilot program. Well, she said the Ministry found that there was a decline in syphilis infection rate from 11 to less than 1 percent. That is the indirect impact of the use of the drug. Elaborating further on the matter, the health minister said the percentage of clients who did not use condoms also fell from 6.3 to 3.9 per cent. Peratus klien yang mempunyai multiple sexual partner juga menurun daripada 44.5 peratus kepada 36.1 peratus. Dan terdapat 14 klien yang telah berhenti menggunakan PrEP kerana tidak lagi melakukan aktiviti seksual yang berisiko. Terdapat tiga kes positif HIV, 0.11% kerana pengguna tidak patuh kepada pengambilan PrEP dan keadaan ini jauh lebih rendah berbanding dengan negara-negara lain yang melaksanakan PrEP lebih awal. The one-year PrEP GOV 2023 program has been conducted at 18th Health Clinics under the Health Ministry since January 2023. Dr. Zaliha said the data from the study will be analysed in early 2024 to determine the direct and indirect impacts of the drug for HIV and high-risk behaviour prevention. <coughs> Well, a total of 410.59 million unsolicited short message services or SMS were blocked by telecommunication companies during the first nine months of this year following the directive from the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, the MCMC. Deputy Communications and Digital Minister Tio Ni Ching said 19 million SMS containing hyperlinks were blocked from 2nd May until September, adding that this effort is to stop online scams in the form of websites, social media accounts, SMS and calls. Tetapi kita tak masih tak ada satu penyelesaian yang boleh kita automatik block semua. Jadi orang masih boleh register nombor yang baru dan juga lah guna pakai teknologi yang, yang terbaru ini, terkini ini untuk lah hantar mesej yang ber, berunsur phishing dan sebagainya. Dan oleh sebab itu, kesedaran orang ramai tentanglah skam ini adalah sangat-sangat penting. On 14th February, MCMC said it had consistently instructed all telecommunication service providers to immediately block any SMS containing prohibited content from being sent or received by any individuals in its effort to combat online scams. Tio said from January until 31st October, MCMC had taken down 4,013 accounts and fraudulent content as well as blocked 1,764 fake websites for information phishing scams. Chiefs warn ongoing geopolitical uncertainty. Well, Prime Minister Judges Rianwa Ibrahim said the implementation of projects this year is better compared to last year, but not satisfactory. While well, speaking at the Ministry of Finance monthly assembly in Putrajaya today, Judges Rianwa, who is also Finance Minister, told all ministries to expedite the implementation of planned projects before the end of this year. Kelunjuran perbelanjaan dan pelaksanaan projek untuk 2023 sepatutnya dia mesti mengatasi 90% pelaksanaannya. Uh, tapi ini belum kita capai. Ya. Jadi saya harap semua jentera uh, mengambil kira perkara ini kerana kita ada hanya kita sampai dua bulan lagi untuk akhir 2023 dan kita mengharapkan pelaksanaan itu dapat dipercepatkan. Uh, 
The Prime Minister has also asked the Minister of Investment, Trade and Industry, MITI, Tanku Dato Sari Zafrul Abdul Aziz, to coordinate the speed of implementation of investment projects in this country. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Anwar asked Bank Nagara and Patronas, who have expertise in the field of Information and Communication Technology, ICT, to share the technology with government departments. The Prime Minister said he had discussed with Patronas Chairman Tan Sri Mohammed Bakke Saleh and Bank Nagara Governor Dato Abdul Rashid Gafoor so that the expertise could be utilised by government departments. He also said that in an effort to improve expertise and skills in the field of ICT in this country, the welfare of the people remains the priority of the government led by him. Karena kita hadapi suasana yang sangat mencabar dan lain daripada biasa. Tetap, tetapi juga seperti mana yang sering saya jadikan dalam tema, ini soal digital transformation, energy transition, new roadmap for industrialization. Itu semua masalah menggapai suatu perkara yang Tinggi, yeah. Well, top global banking chiefs on Tuesday said they were concerned the financial sector's next crisis may come from rising geopolitical uncertainty as extreme events could test market resiliency. Now, the trigger for the next global financial crisis is likely to come from the geopolitical or political space, said Morgan Stanley Chairman and CEO James Gorman at the Global Financial Leaders Investment Summit. Deutsche Bank CEO Christian Sewing also echoed the same sentiment, saying his biggest fear was another geopolitical escalation. And my biggest fear is that there is, for instance, one more geopolitical escalation, and that can hap uh, happen pretty quickly. And the markets at some point in time actually give up their calmness and then you, you, you have a market event. And in this regard, I think we all need to stay um, very much on alert with regard to risk appetite, stress testing, and simply don't do the mistake and simply think that the markets will remain that calm as they are right now. The comments come as an unfolding Israel-Gaza conflict adds uncertainty to the global economic outlook while the Russia-Ukraine war drags on and Sino-US tension continues to rise despite efforts to bring leaders of the two superpowers closer. The banking bosses also express concern about the intensifying regulation in some jurisdictions that was hampering global economic growth and adding pressure to smaller banks, with UBS Group Chairman Colm Kelleher calling them misguided. Well, Bank Nagara Malaysia's or BNM's international reserves amounted to 108.5 billion US dollars as at 31st October this year. Well, the central bank said the reserves position is sufficient to finance 5.1 months of goods and services imports and is 1.0 time the total short term external debt. The main components of the international reserves are foreign currency reserves, US $96.5 billion, International Monetary Fund Reserves Position, US $1.3 billion, Special Drawings Rights, SDRS, US $5.7 billion, Gold, US $2.3 billion, and Other Reserve Assets, US $2.7 billion. Total assets stood at 610.34 billion ringgit, comprising gold and foreign exchange and other reserves, including SDRS, 509.36 billion ringgit, Malaysian government papers, 13.01 billion, loans and advances, 23.99 billion ringgit, land and buildings, 4.14 billion ringgit, and other assets, 59.84 billion ringgit. BNM said capital and liabilities comprised paid up capital 100 million ringgit, reserves 165.01 billion ringgit, currency in circulation 158.20 billion ringgit, deposits by financial institutions 172.78 billion ringgit, federal government deposits 4.61 billion ringgit, other deposits 
37.87 billion ringgit, Bank Nagara Papers, 37.76 billion ringgit, allocation of SDRS, 29.85 billion ringgit, and other liabilities, 5.16 billion ringgit. We're still in biz. Now, the Department of Statistics Malaysia DOSM says Malaysia's Industrial Production Index, or IPI, which consists of three sectors, namely mining, manufacturing and electric city, slipped by 0.5% year-on-year, or YOY, in September 2023. And Chief Statistician Dr. Sri Mohamed Uzir Mahidin said the decrease was mainly influenced by, by the 5.2% downturn, and this is in the mining sector. Conversely, the manufacturing sector returned to marginal growth of 0.4% in September 2023 after experiencing a declining trend for three consecutive months, while the electricity sector ascended by 2.5% as against 1.9% registered in August 2023. On a monthly basis, the IPI showed continuous expansion with 1.1% growth after registering 2.8% in August 2023. On a quarterly basis, the IPI registered a marginal decline of 0.04% YOY in the third quarter of 2023 versus the negative 0.3% recorded in the second quarter of 2023. The chief statistician noted that the IPI expanded at a slower rate of 0.8% for the first nine months of 2023 as compared to the same period last year which stood at 7.7%. The increase was supported by the Manufacturing Index 1.1% and the Electricity Index 1.7% while the Mining Index dipped by 0.4%. Well, there will be little change to Malaysia's production of palm oil for this year as compared with 2022, with the price of crude palm oil hovering around 4,000 ringgit per tonne. According to the Malaysian Palm Oil Board, MPOB Director General Dato Ahmad Parviz Gulam Kadir, as the year end approaches, the board is still hoping that they can get more than what was achieved last year, which is 18.5 million tonnes. He said the country's crude palm oil, CPO, production for the first nine months of 2023 is just 0.5% lower than the same period last year. He also noted that September and October usually would be good months for production, but the recent changes in the weather pattern have changed it and that the effect of El Nino would only be seen in the next six months. Meanwhile, the Director General said CPO demand is expected to increase slightly ahead of the festive season, with India restocking CPO for Deepavali, followed by China and Muslim countries for Chinese New Year and Ramadan and Hari Raya Aidil Fitri. Meanwhile, Council of Palm Oil Producing Countries, CPOPC, Secretary General Rizal Afandi Lukman said sustainable palm oil is the solution to meet the increasing global demand for palm oil. Next, in the foreign front, New Delhi to restrict private vehicles' usage for a week. That and more right after this. Well, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed Monday that Israel will take control of overall security of besieged Gaza after the war. As the Palestinian Health Ministry said, the death toll has surged past 10,000. And resisting calls for a ceasefire, Netanyahu said there would be no let-up in the war to destroy Hamas. One month since the war began, the Hamas-run health ministry said the death toll in Gaza has surpassed 10,000 people. More than 4,000 of them were children. With international criticism of Israel's conduct of the war mounting, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said Gaza was becoming a graveyard for children. More than 1.5 million people in densely packed Gaza have fled their homes for other parts of the territory in a desperate search for cover, with critical aid only trickling in. 
However, Netanyahu said the bombardment would continue until Israel had restored overall security control over Gaza. Netanyahu's comments come after the White House said the Israeli leader had discussed potential tactical pauses in a phone call with US President Joe Biden on Monday. But no agreements were announced and the pair did not broach the possibility of a ceasefire. While key Israeli ally, the United States, is seeking a humanitarian pause in the fighting, several countries and UN agencies have repeatedly called for a ceasefire. The Israeli army claimed that it had pounded Gaza with significant strikes on 450 targets over 24 hours since Sunday morning and that troops were targeting Hamas commanders in underground tunnels. Israeli infantry and tanks have flooded the northern half of the Gaza Strip and tightened an encirclement of Gaza City, effectively splitting the territory in two. Well, New Delhi will restrict the use of private vehicles for a week in a bid to offer residents some respite from the toxic smog choking the mega city. And authorities announced on Monday. Now, Delhi, home to 30 million people, is blanketed in acrid smog at the onset of winter every year, primarily blamed on stubble burning by farmers in the neighboring agrarian states. Now, the city is regularly ranked as one of the most polluted on the planet, with its smog blamed for hundreds of thousands of premature deaths each year. Now, Gopal Rai, Delhi's environment minister, said the road rationing scheme would be introduced for a week from next Monday, a day after Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights when revelers set off firecrackers. Now, under the scheme, cars with odd and even number plates would be allowed to travel on alternate days during the period. Well, he added the situation would be reviewed after 20th November. Levels of the most dangerous PM 2.5 particles reach 184 micrograms per cubic meter on Monday, according to IQ Air, 12 times the daily maximum recommended by the World Health Organization. It is not the first time the road restriction scheme has been tried in the capital, as was put into action in 2016, 17, and 2019. Vehicle emissions account for a significant proportion of uh, air pollution in Delhi, but a 2018 study by Indian government scientists found that the odd even rule did not succeed in reducing emissions and may even have increased them due to disruption to normal traffic patterns. Well, three people were killed and one person was injured after a structural collapse at a fitness club in northeast China's Heilongjiang province. The government officials and state media said seven people were in the Yucheng Fitness Gymnasium in Jiamusi City, Huanan County, when it collapsed late on Monday. An eyewitness video released the same day showed local residents entering the collapsed building and looking for survivors amid the rubble, which was covered by snowfall. Initial reports said three people, possibly children, were at the venue or trapped inside when it collapsed. It was not immediately known what caused the collapse, but the country's northernmost province was slammed by harsh cold and blizzards throughout Monday that wreaked havoc on public transportation and closed schools. In sports, Sviatik regains world number one ranking after outclassing Pegula. Well, up first in the English Premier League, Tottenham Hotspur's hopes of returning to the top of the table were dashed in extraordinary fashion as they went down 4-1 at home to Chelsea on Monday in a frenetic London derby where they finished the game with only nine men on the field. A Nicholas Jackson hat-trick made it a triumphant return to Spurs for Mauricio Pochettino as he earned the biggest result of his short Chelsea tenure. Previously unbeaten Tottenham went ahead after six minutes thanks to Dejan Kulusevski's deflected shot before Christian Romero was sent off after a VAR check for a dangerous tackle that resulted in a penalty. Cole Palmer stepped up and scored the equalising goal for the Blues. Destiny Udogi was shown a second yellow card ten minutes after the break, leaving the host trying to hang on for a point. 
Jackson scored a comeback goal from close range for Chelsea to put them ahead in the 75th minute. Tottenham had an equaliser by substitute Eric Dyer ruled out for offside and Sun saw an effort saved in stoppage time by Robert Sanchez before Jackson wrapped it up with two added time efforts in front of the joyful Chelsea fans. A first league defeat for Australian Angie Postacoglu leaves Spurs in second place with 26 points from 11 games, one behind champions Manchester City. Chelsea's fourth win of the season moved them up to 10th with 15 points. And here on home soil, national squash player Rachel Arnold advances to the quarterfinal stage in 2023 Ace Malaysia Squash Cup after beating compatriot Ira Asman in the second round in Suramban Negeri Sembilan. The Birmingham bronze medalist won 11-6, 10-12, 11-8, 5-11 and 15-13 in 57 minutes to stamp her ticket to the next round. Rachel, who is seeded fifth in the tournament, said Ira put on a good and intense fight. Intense and crazy. Uh, yeah, Ira is a good player, so I really had to keep up with her um, and try to, you know, play my game and try to stick to my game plan. I knew I knew she's good with her hands, so you know, I sort of have to stay focused throughout the whole match, which was um, quite hard, I thought. And Rachel will have a tougher job tomorrow when she is scheduled to meet with the tournament's second seed, Farida Mohammed of Egypt. In tennis, Poland's Iga Swiatek thrashed Jessica Pegula to win the WTA final, sealing her return to world number one spot. Now, second seed Swiatek dominated Pegula from start to finish to clinch a 6 1 6 0 victory in a 59 minute of pure masterclass. Since falling in the round of 16 at the US Open, where she initially conceded her number one ranking, Suyatek has been on a tear. With titles in Beijing and now Cancun, she has also won 12 of 13 matches, including 11 straight. During this stretch, Suyatek has lost only one set, a 95.2% success rate. Suyatek was quickly out of the blocks and broke into the fourth game to take a 3-1 lead before racing away to claim the first set in 27 minutes. It was the first set either player had dropped at the event and Pagula, the world number five, lost her serve for a third time in the first game of the second set. Suyatek was overwhelming her rival and broke to love to go 3-0 up on the way to securing her sixth WTA title of the season. The victory ensured Suyatek will end the year as world number one for a second consecutive season. Suyatek is the youngest champion of the tournament since Petra Kvitova's 2011 win at the age of 21. And with that, we reach the end of Malaysia tonight in our top story. Malaysia remains firm in stance for supporting Palestinians and Hamas. Do join us again tomorrow at 12.30 afternoon for World Today on TV2. And you can also catch it online on RTM Click's website and mobile app. Till then, I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos. And from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Good night.